Alrighty. This is so weird. All right, guys. So I'm going to kind of walk you through what the first day of this Google Classroom looks like. Um, and if you guys have any questions, you know, email us, type it in the stream. Um, and hopefully you guys have all been able to log on by now. And if you haven't, you're not watching this video, so it's irrelevant. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do is go to the PowerPoint. I'm doing the same thing. So you guys go to the PowerPoint right now. Okay, and now you can just listen to my voice while we're going through the PowerPoint. So the first slide on every PowerPoint is gonna be a little bit of a review. So I know it's been a minute since we've been in class. So um, just to bring you back a little bit, we were talking about appeasement. So that's Neville Chamberlain right there. He was the prime minister of England. And obviously that's Hitler with the swastika on his arm. Um, and Hitler really wants to get this little chunk of Czechoslovakia called the Sudetenland um, because those people speak German and he thinks, you know, they, they should be part of Germany. So Neville Chamberlain decides, all right, we'll appease him. We'll give him this little chunk. We'll let him have it. And then that's it. No more after that. So Hitler goes, thank you so much. I will now take over all of Europe. So Hitler does not stop there, which was a problem. He invades Poland and then Britain's like, shoot. I'm so dumb for believing this dude. We gotta declare war. So if you go to the next slide, you can see that most Americans did not wanna get involved in this war. They wanted to stay neutral, took a hint from George, and they wanted to be isolationist all by ourselves. They did not wanna to go to war. They were just kind of coming out of a depression and they're like, Lord, please don't send us to war. So, next slide. By 1940, France had been taken by the Nazis. So France and Britain were together. So France was like pretty much not able to fight this war because the Nazis, Germany had taken over. So Britain was out there trying to fight Germany all by themselves. So they had to call the US for some reinforcements. So Winston Churchill, the leader of England, calls up FDR and he's like, bro, we need some help. We're getting spanked by Germany. So FDR is like, listen, we don't really want to get involved in a war right now, but what we will do is send you some weapons. So they signed the Lend-Lease Act to send over some weapons to Britain to help them fight in the war. If you go to the last slide, um, you can see FDR and FDR is saying, they ask us for the implements of war, the planes, the tanks, the guns, the freighters, which will enable them to fight for their liberty and for our security. Emphatically, we must get these weapons to them, get them to them in sufficient volume and quickly enough so that we and our children will be saved the agony and suffering of war, which others have had to endure. So basically what he's saying is, we don't want to get involved in this war, so let's help them as best we can so that they can defeat Germany and then we don't have to fight. Um, okay, cool. So that's pretty much the PowerPoint. If you go back to day one and you go to the mini quiz. Okay, you answer it right here. So the first question. What action ultimately led to a declaration of war by Britain? One, Germany taking the Sudetenland. Two, Hitler starting the Holocaust. Three, Hitler invading Poland. Or four, Hitler invading Great Britain. All right, you're gonna answer it right in the form. The second one, which term describes the American foreign policy at the start of World War II? One, isolationist two globalist, three interventionist, and four retaliatory. All right, the next one. Through which program did FDR aid Winston Churchill in fighting Germany? 
one Social Security, two the Civilian Conservation Corps, three the Tennessee Valley Authority, or four the Lend Lease Act. And the last question, why did FDR think it necessary to lend weapons to Great Britain? One, to preserve democracy. Two, to prevent us from going to war. Three, to defeat Hitler. Or four, all of the above. All right. So, once you're done answering that little mini quiz, you're gonna go to where it says Lend-Lease Assignment. And this is the document. Okay, cool. So, FDR is speaking here. He says, <clears throat> suppose my neighbor's home catches fire and I have the length of a garden hose four or 500 feet away. If he can take my garden hose and connect it up with his hydrant, I may be able to help him put out his fire. Now what do I do? I don't say to him before that operation, neighbor, my garden hose cost me $15. You have to pay me $15 for it. What is the transaction that goes on? I don't want $15. I want my garden hose back after the fire is over. All right. If it goes through the fire all right intact without any damage to it, he gives it back to me and thanks me very much for the use of it. But suppose it gets smashed up, holes in it during the fire. We don't have to have too much formality about it, but I say to him, I was glad to lend you that hose. I see I can't use it anymore. It's all smashed up. So he says, how many feet of it were there? I tell him there were 150 feet of it. And he says, all right, I will replace it. Now, if I get a nice garden hose back, I'm in pretty good shape. In other words, if you lend certain munitions and you get the munitions back at the end of the war, and if they are intact and they haven't been hurt, you're all right. If they have been damaged or have deteriorated or have been lost completely, it seems to me you come out pretty well if you have them replaced by the fellow to whom you have lent them. So basically he's comparing all of these weapons to a garden hose. Um, if your house is on fire. Um, I'm trying to think of things that we would lend our neighbors. Not really a hose. I don't have a garden hose. Oh, so say I lent this jacket to my roommate. She's over there. And she shrunk it in the laundry. Um, I would say, all right, you have to buy me a new jacket because I lent it to you, I was expecting to get it back in perfect condition, but you shrunk it in the laundry. So I'd say you have to buy me a new one. And then she wouldn't, and then we'd have a fight about it. Just kidding. Um, okay, so what you have to do in five to seven sentences, describe Roosevelt's point of view in regards to the lending of ammunition to Great Britain. Do you agree with him? Would you lend your neighbor items? Oh, here are the examples. Uh, would you lend your neighbor speakers, your bike, your cell phone, if you knew that you would get it back in the same condition or if they messed it up, that they would replace it completely. So what you're gonna do now is go back to the assignment. And it says Lend Lease Act Paragraph Response. And that's where you type it in. Cool. So any questions? type it in the stream. The stream's probably the best place um, so that other people, if they have the same questions, they can ask them there um, and other people can see the responses. Otherwise, feel free to email us. Mr. Kane's going live from nine to 12 every day if you have questions while you're working um, or he'll respond to emails at that time. And hope you guys are staying safe and washing your hands. And... If you have any good Netflix recommendations, also put those in the stream. And I'll see you guys soon.